What happens when the cargo aboard a FedEx plane catches fire? We're going to find out in this video. The center of FedEx 463. Yeah, we just got a uh, cargo fire indication. Uh, we'd like to declare an emergency. And I believe uh, 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 Tulsa may be the closest. Uh, if, if you have another suggestion. FedEx 463 is the aircraft call sign that you'll continue to hear in the audio going forward. Now this started as a pretty typical day for these FedEx pilots. They were planning on going from Sacramento, California to Memphis, Tennessee, when at some point during the flight as they're passing through northern Oklahoma, they get onboard indications of a cargo fire. And so they've reached out to Kansas City Center, they've declared an emergency, told them what the problem is, and they're asking if Tulsa Airport is the closest airport. Now there's a couple reasons for this question, but first of all, you should know that a cargo fire is a pretty serious issue. Depending on the fire suppression systems that might be available on board that aircraft, they may not be able to get that fire under control. So it's very important for them to figure out where the closest airport is and land as soon as possible. I'd like to start descending now. Three to the main scene, so 240. Okay, well, down to 240, FedEx 463. Okay, you're starting to hear a little bit of urgency in the pilot's voice saying they want to start their descent now, and the controller clears them down to flight level 240, which is 24,000 feet. This is one of those emergencies that instructors love to give pilots anytime they're in the simulator because it challenges the pilot to really assess how does he prioritize handling a cargo fire versus flying the aircraft and getting on the ground as quickly as possible. If he takes too much time to fly the aircraft and maybe try to troubleshoot the problem, that cargo fire can spiral out of control really quickly. FedEx 463, third right turn direct Tulsa International. Right turn direct Tulsa, FedEx 463. The controller has now cleared the flight to start a right-hand turn direct to Tulsa International. And if you didn't notice, there's now a second voice on the radio for FedEx 463. That's going to be one of the other pilots on board making the radio calls. FedEx 463, would you like a certain heading to get down into Tulsa? Now the reason why the controller is asking this question is because he can look on his display scope, he can see that the aircraft has started that right hand turn to point direct towards Tulsa, but the controller doesn't know what's going on inside that aircraft. Has the cargo fire gotten out of control? Is it starting to impact the aircraft navigation systems? Maybe there's smoke and fumes in the cockpit that are obscuring the instruments and making the aircraft more difficult to fly. So this is a very important question for the controller to ask the pilots. Uh, we're just uh, getting ourselves down here as fast as we can. Uh, stand by. Now the pilot that made the initial emergency call hops on the radio and basically tells the controller to stand by. And those are probably the most important words that any pilot can tell a controller in an emergency situation. Because you're basically letting the controller know that, look, I've got my hands full right now. I'm dealing with a cargo fire. I'm starting to turn the aircraft. Just give me a second and I'll get back to you. FedEx 463 to maintain 16,000. Maintain 16,000, FedEx 463. FedEx 463, contact Tulsa approach 124.0. 240, FedEx uh, 463, ready. As the aircraft is continuing its descent, Kansas City Center is typically responsible for the airspace at 10,000 feet and above. And so he's got to switch them off to a different controller on frequency 124.0. That's approach control, and they're going to control the airspace below 10,000 feet and the sequencing of aircraft into the airport. FedEx 463 heavy uh, wind able. It can give me uh, fuel remaining and fuel on board. All right, I've talked about this in some of my other videos, but the main reason air traffic control is always gonna ask this question about the fuel remaining and the souls on board is because they need to have that information to give to the emergency crews that would be responding. 6-3 heavy, got about an hour and a half fuel, 48,000 pounds, three souls on board. 463 heavy, Roger, expect runway eight, RNF runway one, runway eight. Um, if you drive flex runway one eight left, let me know. Now the controller tells the pilots they can expect to land on runway 8, which is heading 080, or basically east. Now here's the problem with that. If we assume this microphone is the airfield, the aircraft is already located east of the airport. So in order for them to fly an approach heading to the east, they're going to have to fly all the way to the west side of the airport and then turn back around and point heading 080 to fly that approach. And that might take up way more time than they really want to. And that's why the controller also offers them an approach to runway 18, which is heading basically south. FedEx 
63 heavy, turn right, heading 310 when able. Right, heading 310, FedEx 463 heavy, right. Now the radio call was too distorted to include in this video, but basically the pilot's request to land on runway 18 left if possible. Roger, click out from runway 18 left. Now the controller tells the pilots to expect the ILS to runway 18 left. An ILS is a type of instrument approach procedure that the pilots can put into their onboard navigation systems to help the aircraft get aligned with the runway. Uh, unit 4 plus 2, it looks like it's going to runway 18 left to the... Fly heading 350. Heading 350, FedEx 463, heading. Uh, emergency wants to go to runway 18 left. Uh, fire truck on the west side, runway 18 west, cross, runway 18 west, and Bravo. You gotta hurry up, he's 12 miles out, and there's a cargo fire. Runway 18 west, uh, we just have some people on the, on the uh, field right now, we're getting them off as soon as we can. Okay, so what you're hearing is Tulsa Ground Control trying to coordinate with some of the fire trucks and other emergency response vehicles that are trying to pre-position to be in place when this aircraft lands. But you're also hearing approach control tell FedEx 463, basically that coordination's going on still, and they're trying to get some people moved around off the runway or some vehicles off the runway. Because probably the worst thing that could happen for these pilots is if they find themselves in a position to land, but now there's a fire truck blocking the runway, they're gonna have to go around and do it all over again. I'd like to keep this any FedEx 463 heavy, okay? FedEx 463 heavy, to 19, 3,000. 3,000 FedEx 463 heavy. The controller has now cleared the aircraft to descend down to 3,000 feet, which is really a comfortable altitude for the pilots to be at to get set up for that approach to the runway. 270, FedEx 463, heavy rod. And we'd like to keep coming left, FedEx 463, heavy. FedEx 463, heavy flight heading 210 to join the final force course. So right now the controller is giving the pilots some headings to fly to basically get the aircraft turned back around to set themselves up for that approach. FedEx 463, heavy, three miles from Orca, maintain 3,000 to establish on the final approach course cleared RNAV for runway 18 left approach. FedEx 463, heavy, contact off tower 121.2. Tower FedEx 463, heavy, uh, emergency aircraft, short, uh, or final for 18 left. FedEx 463, heavy, south tower runway 18 left, for the land, wind 0 at 4. For the land, 18 left, FedEx uh, 463. Okay, the aircraft has switched over to tower control and they've been cleared to land, but this emergency is not over, so let's find out what happens next. We are going to need a uh, fire truck for FedEx 463 Heavy. Uh, we got a lower aft cargo fire alert. FedEx 463 Heavy, Roger, we have all the trips standing by. All right, so this is the first attempt that we've heard from the pilots to relay some information to the emergency vehicles that will be responding. And the reason this is important is because when the plane comes to a stop on the runway, if there's not flames shooting outside of the aircraft, the fire trucks need to know where to direct their efforts to. Once they bring the aircraft to a stop on the runway, the tower tells them, hey, I'm not seeing any smoke coming from the cockpit or any other indications of fire. But the pilot says that, look, we have a heat signature. And this basically means that we have all evidence that there is a cargo fire on board, so we are evacuating. And thankfully, all three crew members were able to evacuate safely. And the pilots did a fantastic job of handling the emergency and getting the aircraft safely on the ground as quickly as possible. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out one of the other ones on the screen here. And I'll see you next time on Pilot Debrief.